Excuse me, sir, you can't be parked here. So they were like verbal to shit out of So I didn't film the progress, but this one is from the Cordier R transmission. Come on, focus, or the Accord casing. And though it's a little bit newer, I was still able to get the pins in and they locked in place, which is good. I don't mind, I need them to lock and fresh. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm not gonna solder it, I'm just gonna go ahead and use butt connectors and. It'll work. I'm gonna. I already have a tucked harness for this. I just need a P28 OBD1 ECU or any OBD1 ECU that I can chip. What the fuck is a kilometer? I mean, that's still considered a hundred, right?
right so camber is coming straight all right so camber is gonna be aligned straight and i'm removing the wheel spacers and i'm raising the car maybe about two inches So you're probably wondering why the bumper's off. Timing belt snapped. So now I gotta remove that head. Currently draining the coolant. And then hopefully there's no damage. I was doing about 70 when it happened. Heard something like a little pop and I'm just like, what the heck's that noise? And loss of power and then try to hit the gas and then no power I thought it was the, the fuel pump check that out it's still primed I cranked it over and it was like a no compression crank so I mean it cranked over smoothly went over to the front popped the hood this was on the freeway seen that the belt was just there I'm like damn okay and shout out to the homie Emerson shout out to the homie Juan they helped me out and Isaac the brother of Isaac Emerson we're out to like 4 a.m. just to get this this car home. If it ain't one thing, let me just show you what I got. Two transmissions, a bunch of gears, some toys. We gotta make something happen soon. Again, excuse me for always not recording everything I do, but um, I got, you know, crunch time. <clears throat> Cam holders out, cans out. It looks like I'm draining it all right now so I can remove the intake manifold gasket, intake manifold, that gasket is reusable. But it looks like there's some indentations or visible markings that, you know, it might have hit the exhaust. I, I want to say that's it, same time I don't want to say that's it, but... I have new valves, I'm just going to replace it, and I don't know, I don't have time to get the head cut or the block cut. I know cylinder number two is bad, low compression, I have some glue, some head gasket glue that I'm just going to apply on this head gasket and the block, and hopefully that'll solve my problems for now. So I knew the head gasket was bad, so I bought another valve cover gasket. I didn't know what was going to be wrong with the head gasket, maybe the valves are bent, because when I went to visit my buddy in Northern California. One of the aftermarket valve springs that I bought, I'm not going to say name, um, broke and it was the first recorded, you know, ever broken valve spring. So they were kind enough to send me three more as a replacement. So I'm going to replace that one so I can have a full valve train again. And then, um, oh, oh, you didn't see that. <laughs> and then, um, I got some valves right here and a head gasket. Uh, many of you, I doubt you guys remember my EGSI hatch. It was B18B1 boosted. And I had a $13 head gasket from eBay that was holding 10 pounds of boost. So don't knock it till you try it. All right, so I'm removing the exhaust ones now. I already did all the intake side, no bends or anything, but that little missing carbon buildup is where the piston and valve met. Come on. Whatever. But yeah, that's all that missing stuff. Just give it a smooch and uh, I'm going ahead and just might as well replace them all. I got some brand new ones. So I'm just gonna send it. I need this car running ASAP. I didn't want to film the cranking over and all that because I was scared. It did like sputter up, but it's alive. She's alive. <laughs>